So, you unwashed villain dare criticize my appearance, mannerisms, and speech? We shall settle this at 12 paces. Whenever the topic of dueling comes up, people often make statements to the effect of, we should bring dueling back. If it made a comeback, people wouldn't be so offended anymore. Well, let's talk about it. See if it went down that way in history. So first off, there are different forms of dueling. The oldest is single combat on the battlefield. Before the armies engage, a warrior might call out a champion from the opposing army to fight one-on-one -on -one to prove their valor. The Celts were fond of that practice, and of course the Greeks have tales of heroes in their epic struggles. Hector versus Achilles is an obvious example. Then there's trial by combat or judicial dueling, which was used to settle disputes over property, injury, theft, honor, etc. So the idea was whenever people were so entrenched in a dispute and the evidence wasn't clear and it was difficult to figure out who was in the right, divine intervention would make the righteous party win in a duel. It was officially sanctioned by Otto the Great in 967 as part of Germanic tribal law, but a legal code of 1300 in Germany prohibited judicial dueling uh, because it was perceived that oftentimes somebody would lose a case simply because the opponent was more skilled in battle or more physically fit. But judicial dueling continued anyway, and this is sort of an ongoing theme in history. Duels were often discouraged or prohibited, although not always actively prosecuted. Uh, sometimes a ruler made an exception and allowed a duel if otherwise it was too difficult to decide who was in the right. Uh, and then finally, you have duels of honor, which were common from the mid 16th century. They were used to settle personal disagreements and insults, not based on law, but cultural customs. Since private dueling at the time was illegal in many areas, People would simply meet up in secluded places like the forest, for example. In the 17th century, the Catholic Church threatened excommunication for anyone who participated in this practice and also stated that those killed during a duel couldn't be buried in hallowed ground, which apparently wasn't enforced. The practice of dueling reached its height in the late 16th century with smaller peaks in the 17th century. By the way, in the early 17th century, a challenge was issued by throwing a glove at the opponent's feet. So they didn't slap each other with gloves, but they would throw down the gauntlet, hence the saying, or it could also be a dagger, and the opponent would accept the challenge by picking it up. In the late 17th century, on the other hand, challenges were either written or verbal in front of witnesses. Not as stylish as the glove, if you ask me. So when people imagine dueling coming back and shutting up offended people, I'm assuming this is what they have in mind, a, an honor duel. So let's look at some actual examples. The first one is uh, one that I covered in another video where I talked about the technique involved there, which took place on July 10th, 1547, where Guy Chabot, the Baron de Jarnac, met François de Vivonne, Seigneur de la Chetanieray. In that video, I talked about the coup de Jarnac specifically, so I'll link it down below if you're interested. So this was a judicial duel, but I'm mentioning it anyway as an example because it follows the logic of an honor duel, and it could have happened as such. The situation was this. Dauphin Henri gossiped that Jarnac had an affair with his stepmother, who basically financed his lifestyle. So, uh, his sugar mama? Jarnac was, of course, outraged and called it a lie. However, he couldn't accuse Henri directly because he was above his station, higher up in the social hierarchy. So Chetanieray offered to act as basically an unofficial champion by claiming that Jarnac himself told him about this inappropriate intimacy with his stepmother. So then Jarnac could accuse him directly of lying, 
which is akin to challenging him to a duel. I said I've covered this duel in more detail in another video, but the short version is basically Chetanire received at least one deep cut to the leg that made him incapable of continuing the duel, and he refused medical treatment and died of his wound. So he could probably have survived it easily with proper care, but it's reasonable to assume that he refused it because he knew that it was a crippling wound that would have ruined his ability to fight. So he rather died than you know, accept the dishonor of being crippled. Here's a duel from Canada. On the 11th of April, 1819, Montreal doctor and lawyer William Caldwell met lawyer, politician, and militia officer Michael O'Sullivan at Windmill Point on the Lachine Canal for a duel. Caldwell took part in a petition to ask the provincial government for financial aid in building a public hospital. The facilities at Hotel Dieu couldn't cope with the volume of patients. Now, O'Sullivan opposed the petition and heavily criticized the motives of the petitioners. He was of the opinion that simply expanding the existing facilities would be enough and building another hospital would be a waste of public funds. So Caldwell responded angrily and implied that O'Sullivan lacked courage. Now, uh, by the way, I read it verbatim and... Um, People had a different idea of what was offensive. At least the way we read it nowadays was extremely subtle and not very disrespectful. But at the time they had different standards and it was offensive apparently. So O'Sullivan challenged him to a duel, which happened the next day. They exchanged pistol shots five times. One shot shattered Caldwell's arm and two seriously wounded O'Sullivan. Both survived, but a later autopsy after O'Sullivan's death showed that he still had a lead ball lodged in his spine from that. So I imagine that must have given him a lot of chronic pain. So at that time, it was common to fire shots only until first blood was drawn. Sometimes duelists would refuse to fire or fire in the air or deliberately miss. If the opponents weren't too hot-headed, they might consider simply showing up for the duel enough to satisfy honor. Another duel took place in New York City in 1816 between a Mr. Price and a Major Green. So apparently, Mr. Price was accompanied by several ladies at the theater and complained that Major Green stared at them, who in turn apologized, saying that he just freshly came from Europe and wasn't familiar with the customs in America yet, didn't mean to offend anyone. All fine and good, right? Later, Mr. Price boasted that he taught this British officer some manners and put him in his place. Uh, so Major Green mentioned this to his commander, who said he had to seek an explanation and demand an apology, which he did, but Mr. Price refused. Now, dueling was banned in New York, and the survivor would face the death penalty. So what did they do? Well, they arranged the duel on the other side of the Hudson River, where the regulations were not as strict. The first exchange of shots missed, and the seconds tried to convince them to call it good and leave it be, but they didn't relent. So they fired again, missing once more. And at that point, the seconds were like, screw this, we're out. So they refused to carry on. Now, Major Green would have been satisfied at this point. Uh, his honor was satisfied and he didn't really have a personal beef with that other guy. He was ready to walk away. But Mr. Price wasn't. They reduced the distance from 12 paces to six paces and Major Green shot him right through the head. So this guy, who I assume was secretly carrying a whole catalog of insecurities, died for the pettiest reason. He had several chances to walk away. At first, when the Major apologized, he could have just been like, okay, fine, we're good, no problem. Afterwards, after he boasted about it and the major confronted him, he could have said, okay, sorry, bro, I got carried away, all right. Then they could have called it off before coming to a duel, or at least they could have met up in the agreed upon location and said, you know what, we showed up, fine. They exchanged shots once, missed. Both were okay. This would have been the perfect opportunity to say, all right, we both have big brass balls, we're good, no problem. Mm -mm, not enough. This is just how people are sometimes, especially young dudes with a chip on their shoulder trying desperately to prove something 
If dueling came back, we would end up with the same thing, I guarantee you. Maybe now people would be dueling over who has the better waifu, or most likely neighbors would get into duels over the vote such and such signs in each other's backyards. But wait, I saved the best one for last. 1808, Monsieur de Grand Pré and Monsieur Le Pique got into an argument over the favor of a lady. Typical guy thing, right? So they decided to settle their dispute a month later. For that purpose, two identical hot air balloons were made and each of their, the duelists with their second entered one of the balloons. So the idea was to shoot the opponent's balloon with a blunderbuss upon a signal. And they did. Le Pique missed, but de Grand Pré shot through the balloon, which rapidly descended and crashed, killing both Le Pique and his second. Such a civil dispute. So here's the problem with the dueling culture. It wasn't just an option, it was often an obligation. Because people were pressured into dueling at a time when gentlemen were hypersensitive about their honor. If you read the Royal Code of Honor from 1829, it prescribed restrained behavior. One should refrain from escalating a quarrel, apologize and accept apologies whenever possible, sacrifice individual feelings rather than public interests, things like that. Seconds were expected to try de-escalating and mediating and nobody was allowed to issue challenges when drunk. So there was a long list of rules for behavioral conduct and the text also aims to vilify the practice of dueling through reasoning and anecdotes of people who averted duels. And it's telling that although the code of honor vilifies dueling as a barbaric practice, it still regulates it rather than prohibiting it altogether. So if you read it between the lines, you could really tell how embedded it was in the culture. And if you have such a long list of specific rules of how to do it, you can tell that that's not how people acted. That's why the code was written, to try to steer people in a more productive and less dangerous direction. The book Gentleman's Blood by Barbara Holland, which is a great read by the way, I would recommend it and I'll post the link down below, where it describes the mindset behind dueling. Now, I forgot the specific names and dates, but I remember one case for the absurdity of the situation. Uh, two men were good friends and, and liked to tease each other, and uh, one insulted the other in public, you know, in jest, but he was overheard by somebody else who then pointed it out and said, you know, he insulted you. So they basically insisted that the, the guy would have to challenge his friend to a duel. So there was social pressure on this man to challenge his friend in order to save his honor, which he really didn't want to. History is full of reports of duels for many different reasons and sometimes pretty stupid reasons. People didn't refrain from quarreling just because they were afraid of getting hurt in a duel. Duels didn't prevent rude behavior, they just increased the cost of rude behavior and decreased men's life expectancy. From what I understand, what eventually got rid of dueling is not prohibition as such, but the attempt to shift cultural values and portray it inc increasingly as uncivilized, something that you just don't do as a gentleman. Whereas before the idea was, it is your duty as a gentleman to defend your honor. If you think about how much some people still overreact when their masculinity is questioned or whatever, I'm convinced that if dueling was legal, it would not make them any less offended. And when you take a closer look at how people in history acted and talked, you see that they weren't really any less offended. They were just offended by different things. So yeah, in some cases, literally violently offended to the point of putting bullets through each other's heads. So yeah, <laughs> hope you found this interesting. Seemed like a good opportunity to educate people about historical duels and all that. So thanks for watching and have a good one, folks. Be polite to each other, even if you don't have to fear for your lives anymore. Mm -hmm.